How bad is it? That's the problem, sir. We don't know. In honor of the Russo brothers era of the Avengers coming to an end, I decided to travel back in time to revisit the previous Joss Whedon era of the Avengers for a video. And what's interesting about this video is that initially it was supposed to be the total opposite. The title that you see, it was supposed to be the other way around. This because throughout the years pretty much everything I've heard about these two films follows along the same lines. The Avengers is fantastic, Age of Ultron is a not so fantastic disappointment. Even with me, I saw Age of Ultron once in 3D and thought the 3D conversion was so horrendously dark and poorly made that I just dismissed the whole movie and never thought about it again. Until now, when after half a decade, I finally went back and saw these films for a second time. Again, you've all seen the title of the video, so I might as well just go ahead and say it. Upon my revisit, the original Avengers I found to be not that great. To be blunt, I could barely even get through some sections of it. Age of Ultron however, I thought was fantastic. It's no Infinity War, but still easily among the better films in the MCU that I remember seeing. Easily miles better than this. Now, before we get into what actually made me change my views of these films, I want to quickly bring up some of the more common negativity aimed at Age of Ultron. The strongest source of this negativity, as I found it, seems to stem from the promotional material. If you remember back to 2014, you might remember that the trailers promised a very dark movie with a very dark villain, which ultimately turned out to be a very comedic lighthearted movie with a very comedic lighthearted villain. And as a DC fan, I understand how this broken promises aspect can be very frustrating. But that said, if you go back now and see this movie only as what it is and not as what it was supposed to be, the tone isn't really an issue, at least not any more than it was in the original Avengers. Although I will admit that there exists a bit of a Lucas effect in Age of Ultron, meaning because Whedon's snappy comedic style worked so well before, he kinda doesn't see how he at times is starting to go too far with it, to the point where the comedy makes no sense. Guys, stop, we gotta talk this through. It's a good talk. No, it wasn't. Okay, what? Everybody's afraid of something. Cuttlefish, deep sea fish, they make lots, disco lots. <laughs> Okay, what? Plus, some demeaning female hero moments. Seems to be a Whedon trademark. Sorry. All that said, let's just get to it. Let's see how I went into these films with a plan to make a video about in what ways the Avengers is superior to Age of Ultron, only for the video to ultimately turn out the exact opposite. Let's see what are the key filmmaking reasons that made me view Age of Ultron as a much stronger movie of the two. One of the initial points I thought I would be talking about was how the Avengers is visually superior to Age of Ultron. Like I said, I saw Age of Ultron once in 3D, and because the 3D made the movie so dark, I genuinely hated how it looked. But now, watching it the way it was meant to be watched, it looks pretty great. I'm not here to argue whether or not it should have won an Oscar for cinematography, but what is undeniable is that it visually looks like an actual film. The Avengers, however, kind of looks like a cheap TV movie movie. Even though I immediately did notice a visual problem with the Avengers, I couldn't put my finger on what it was exactly. It might be the TV-like aspect ratio, it might be the lenses, it might be the unemotional lack of focus, but ultimately what I believe to be the main problem is the overly flat lighting. The lighting in the Avengers is so incredibly flat that this 200 million dollar blockbuster has the same visual appearance as my grandmother's favorite daytime soap opera. It's not always bad, but it is especially bad in the scenes taking place on the helicarrier. And as you know, most of the movie takes place on the helicarrier. To visualize what I'm trying to say, let's compare these two laboratory scenes from the Avengers and Age of Ultron, starting with Ultron. Our job is if. What if you were sipping margaritas on a sun-drenched beach, turning brown instead of green? Not looking over your shoulder for Veronica. 
Looking at the starting frame of the shot, what do you see? Obviously, you see color. And not only color, but color that organically projects itself out into the environment. And as for the environment itself, you see shades of color there too, from white to steel to dark. Plus, there's also reflections, there's depth. All of this is great, but at the same time, even though some of the overhead lamps are wisely turned off, you could still perhaps argue that the lighting overall is somewhat flat, because the frame is primarily dominated by shadowless cold white light. Not really, but for the sake of argument. But if we continue, watch what happens. Our job is if. What if you were sipping margaritas on a sun-drenched beach turning brown instead of green? Just like that, we move away from the dominant white light and enter more of a shadow. We started out cold and we ended up warm, which is very evident in the skin of our characters. As in, in this one shot, there are clear noticeable shifts in the temperature and volume of light. As in, there exists a clear contrast between white and black. As in, the lighting isn't flat. Now look at a similar shot from the Avengers. Wondering if they shouldn't have kept them on ice. <laughs> Guy's not wrong about Loki. He does have the jump on us. What he's got is an Acme Dynamite kit. It's gonna blow up in his face. And I'm gonna be there when it does. Right away, you can notice a couple things. The entire environment is the same steel color. There are also no reflections, no depth. There are some colors, but they don't project out into the environment. And what's worst is that the dominant cold white light the entire time remains the same. There are no notable shadows. There is no notable contrast between white and black, because there's barely any black whatsoever. It's like they showed up, turned on all the overhead lamps, and just started filming, very much like in some daily soap operas. Like I said, it's not always like this, but for the most part, it kind of is. For the most part, the Avengers doesn't seem to comprehend the concept of contrast. Either the frame is all light and no shadow, or it's all shadow and no light. Which means that unlike Age of Ultron, it doesn't look like a film. Aside from the visual side, one of the bigger problems with the Avengers is in the characters. In the MCU today, our main heroes have become very fleshed out, to the point where they feel less like fictional characters and more like actual real-life people. And when you now go back to this movie, the difference in character right away is jarring. These people don't feel like real people, they feel like exaggerated caricature cartoon versions of themselves. What you see is what you get. Captain America is the upright soldier who does things because he's the upright soldier. Thor is the god of thunder, just fulfilling the duties of the god of thunder. Banner is the literal MCU equivalent of Jekyll and Hyde, without much else. Hawkeye is evil, because the bad guy magically hypnotizes him to be evil. Stark apparently still is pained by the fact that he used to sell weapons, but it isn't really evident enough here. Black Widow is fighting to save Hawkeye, which honestly does make her the best character in the movie, but I still wish that this relationship could have have been properly shown instead of just briefly hinted at. Overall, that's all that we really know about these characters as they appear in this movie. That's all that they are. That's enough! I've come here to put an end to Loki's schemes. Compare this to Age of Ultron, which actually spends time exploring these characters and who they are inside. Thanks to Scarlet Witch, we really get into the heads of our main heroes. Tony Stark feels responsibility for the coming doom, which gives him an unhealthy obsession to fix things. Captain America, despite acting like an exemplary unbreakable leader, still is haunted by his past and the inescapable feeling that he doesn't really belong here. Thor is afraid that he brings only destruction and that he's not good enough to protect the people his duty it is to protect. Black Widow is genuinely ashamed of her past and who she is, in the same way that Banner is ashamed of who he is, which creates a direct connection between them. And it doesn't stop there. We also get an inside look into Hawkeye with his family that nobody knew existed. Plus, let's not forget the twins, who also have their own very effective character building backstory, the effects of which you can really see in them. Then the second shell hits, but it doesn't go off. And on the side of the shell, it's painted one word. Stark. Every effort to save us, every shift in the bricks, I think, this will set it off. We wait for two days for Tony Stark to kill us. 
You could maybe defend the Avengers by saying that these characters overall just weren't as fleshed out in 2012 as they were in 2015, even though I would already argue against this. But even if so, it doesn't really change anything, does it? All the main characters in the Avengers, including the villain, which we'll get to later, are more or less shallow caricatures. Whereas in Age of Ultron, they are actual people with actual depth. If you still don't agree, consider this. In the Avengers, the bad guy makes the hero do stuff by just magically hypnotizing them. In Age of Ultron, the bad guy makes the hero do stuff by amplifying their inner flaws and fears. One of these methods feels like a cartoon, the other like real life. I'll let you decide which is which. Continuing off on the previous point, next up is the topic of domestic conflict. Since these movies are about a big team of heroes, there has to be conflict not only with the villains, but also among the heroes. And to be fair, both movies do feature this domestic conflict. But because we already established that the heroes in the Avengers are very much like shallow cartoon characters, that kind of by default means that the conflict as well is much more shallow and cartoony than in Age of Ultron. To give you some perspective, here are some of the most central domestic conflicts of the Avengers. Captain America clashes with Tony Stark, because their upright soldier and billionaire playboy personalities don't really mix. Thor clashes with everyone, because he's the outsider god. Banner clashes with himself, as well as with Black Widow and Thor as Hulk. In of themselves, these conflicts might seem fine, but when you compare them to the conflicts of Age of Ultron, not so much. Because everything that the Avengers does, Age of Ultron does much better, with much more depth. Captain America once again clashes with Stark, only not just because of personalities, but because Stark's methods of saving the world are in direct disagreement with Cap's methods. Banner once again clashes with himself, only this time much more effectively, because now we actually see how he hurts and terrorizes civilians as Hulk. He also clashes with Black Widow, when he constantly tries to run away from her by convincing himself that he's too much of a monster for her, which is a lot deeper and more interesting than her just physically running away from him. Then we also have Thor, whose conflict actually organically evolves, because this time he too clashes with himself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, use your words, buddy. I have more than enough words to describe you, Stark. Thor, then why would you bring Stark is right. And of course, that isn't nearly the end of the domestic conflict in Age of Ultron. We also have the twins changing sides. We also have the question of whose side is Vision actually on. We also have a primary philosophical conflict of the Avengers acting like world police and consequently being viewed as monsters by some. Even with the actual physical domestic battles, Age of Ultron does outperform the Avengers. Because this time, these battles don't take place just on a military helicarrier or in the woods in the middle of nowhere, but instead, on a densely populated area where innocent people are getting hurt as a direct result of this conflict. If you're still not convinced, let me ask you this. Out of these two options, which do you think is the better reason for main characters to argue and fight? One, because their beliefs and actions are in direct disagreement with one another. Or two, because this magical scepter is magically making them angry at one another. The choice is yours. As was mentioned before, the final key difference between the Avengers and Age of Ultron revolves around the topic of villains. If I've understood things correctly, Loki apparently for many fans is one of the best MCU characters. And uh, I'm not here to argue against that. Maybe he is, I don't know. But as for Loki being one of the best MCU villains, no. The reason I say this is because the Avengers never makes it clear enough who Loki is or what he wants or for what reason. There is one brief mention of it, but blink and you'll miss it. Your precious Earth. Do you remember none of that? I remember a shadow. Living in the shade of your greatness. I remember you tossing me into an abyss. I who was and should be king. So you take the world I love as recompense for your imagined slights? No. 
The Earth is under my protection, Loki. <laughs> Even if you did pick up on it, the villain motivation you just heard still is pretty problematic. Firstly, because it's a motivation for a standalone Thor movie, not an Avengers movie. As in, if Loki's problem is only with Thor, what's the point of having the other Avengers involved at all? Secondly, you can't just casually mention the motivation with the assumption that the audience already knows where it comes from. And before you argue that Loki's motivation was fleshed out in the first Thor movie, that doesn't matter. I'm not watching the first Thor movie, I'm watching this movie. That's like saying that Thanos' motivation was never explained in Infinity War War, but instead only in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Even if these movies exist in the same fictional universe, that's not how that works. And therefore, in my opinion, the main villain in the Avengers doesn't work. Especially when compared to Age of Ultron. Because I initially discarded this film as insignificant, I also ended up doing the same with Ultron. But upon a closer look, turns out that Ultron is a strangely great villain. Is he as great as the trailers make him seem? I can't say. But he is, for sure, one of the best MCU villains, right behind Thanos and of course Malekith. And this is because all the things that were problems with Loki are strengths with Ultron. Within this one movie, we get to know exactly who Ultron is and what he wants and why. In essence, Ultron is Tony Stark. Only instead of being driven by emotion like Tony Stark, he is driven by logic, which gives this movie a nice running theme of emotion versus logic. Just like Stark, Ultron has an unhealthy obsession to save the world. And in his logical mind, the only proper way to truly save the world is to allow it to evolve, which history has proven is best done by fire. And the only reason this evolution hasn't come is because each time the Avengers have been there to stop it. I'm sorry, I know you mean well. You just didn't think it through. You want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. How is humanity saved if it's not allowed to evolve? There's only one path to peace. The Avengers' extinction. Accordingly, we have a clearly explained villain motivation that concerns not just one hero, but the entirety of the Avengers. The Avengers believe that life and humanity means traditional organic life. Ultron, however, views life as a more broad concept. And the next step in human evolution is for life to become artificial. Emotion versus logic pretty good. But even though Ultron is a robot, that doesn't mean he is without emotion. Throughout the movie, Ultron is tormented by the idea that he is nothing but a soulless photocopy of Tony Stark. And the further we go, the more this idea starts to consume him and turn him into an unhinged maniac. And when you combine the witty charisma of Tony Stark with the paranoid schizophrenia of a gigantic AI, the result really is unlike anything else in the MCU. Do I look like Iron Man? Stark is no! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so oh, I'm sure that's gonna be okay. I'm sorry. It's just I don't understand. Don't compare me with Stark. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not here to change anyone's mind. You like the Avengers? Fine. You like Age of Ultron? Fine. I just thought that after all these years of hearing only one perspective of the argument, I'd finally offer the opposite. And uh, there you have it.